Okay, today we're going to learn a bit, little bit about Illustrator. So you're going to come down here to your dock. If you do not have this icon for Illustrator, you're going to go into Finder. You're going to go to Applications. This is where all your applications are. You're going to go to Adobe Illustrator CS5, not the CS3, and open Illustrator. Once you open Illustrator, you're going to need to create a new document. Right now, we have the program open, but we do not have a document. So we have to go up to File, New. And we need to set the size and what units we are going to be measuring in. Um, I don't know about you. I don't know about points. I don't know about picas. I don't know about millimeters, centimeters, or pixels. I'm an inches kind of guy. So I'm going to use inches, and that's what you need to use. We are going to use an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper down here you have a little arrow you can uh, bring up advanced options right now we don't have to worry about that we don't have to worry about anything else except changing the size to eight and a half by eleven the units to inches and if you want you can rename it and I'm going to rename it heart because that's what we are making <clears throat> so I have my new document here uh, before we get into anything, I want to show you the Layers tab. So over here, my Layers tab is already open. If yours isn't, if you hold your mouse over these little icons, it will tell you what they are. You need to find the one that says Layers. Open it up. If that, you can't find it over here, you can always come up here to Window. Window. These are any windows that we could bring up and you can find the layers one you click on it and it pops up so we are going to need the layers out the first thing I'm going to do is double click on that and I'm going to change it to guide because these are my this is going to be my guide layer now I have a guide layer I now need to start putting on guides as of right now I do not have a ruler up here so I don't I could put guides but you know I don't know specifically where they're going so I need to bring my rulers out if I go up to view because I want to view rulers I can come down here and show rulers you can also do shortcut key command R so there are my rulers if I hit command R they disappear hit command R they reappear so I have my ruler out I have my layer as guide and the first thing we are going to do is set up guides so to create a guide you have to click in the ruler so I have my arrow over here in the ruler and I'm going to click and drag it to the center so if this paper is eight and a half my center is four and a quarter so I come to four I come over a quarter and I drop my guide so how you do that is you come over here you click and hold and you drag it to where you want so right now I have my center one I also want to come in an inch on either side so I'm going to drag that one there and that's a half inch so I'm going to drag that there so I now have three vertical guides I now need to split these I want to cut these in half um, so there's a couple ways you can do it one you can do the math in your head okay one inch two inch three and a quarter inches so then you would know okay that's one and a half plus an eighth that's one and five uh, one and five eighths or what you can do is you can come over here and move your ruler this point that I just clicked on is now the zero zero point so how I did that right here where my rulers intersect I click and drag it down and drop and that will now make this point is zero zero and so now it comes over one two three and a quarter so if I bring over another guideline one these are eighth marks, so one, two, three, four, five. That is now my center mark there. I can do the same thing now for over here. I can click and make my zero, zero point right here. I can 
drag another guideline one and five eighths over and I now have the center of my workpiece and then I'm going to be drawing between these two outside guidelines and I have the center between those two right here okay and all of that is in my guides layer over here everything I'm doing is in my guides layer <clears throat> I now need to do horizontal so I'm going to come down two inches and drop this is still zero here so that's still two inches and then I'm going to come up an inch and I'm going to be drawing inside this square I just made here okay so I have my guide set I'm now going to come over here and create a new layer so I'm going to come down here if you hold your mouse over it'll tell you what these buttons are I want to create a new layer and this layer I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to label it heart click OK I want to make sure that layer is selected because if it's not then I'm going to actually be drawing in a different layer so I want that selected now right now my guides are still active I can click and drag them or delete them if I want um, there's a couple ways that you can stop that I want them to be locked so that when I'm doing my other drawings uh, these guides don't get in my way so one you can lock the whole layer so if I just click this little icon there's an eyeball that allows you to hide or view the layer and then this lock allows you to lock the layer now if I click on my guides I cannot drag them anywhere you can do that another way you can lock your guides is if you come up to view and go to guides you can go to lock guides okay so you could click that so anytime you are trying to move your guides and you can't move them or you can't delete them you need to double check one that your layer is not locked and then two you need to go into view guides and make sure that they are unlocked I'm going to unlock them from there and I'm just going to lock this layer this layer has all my guides in it so I should be good to go so now my heart I have that layer selected this is the layer I'm going to be drawing in so I I'm going to be drawing from here over to here and actually I forgot a guide so I'm going to go back into my guide and I'm going to draw it one inch one inch down from here lock that layer again and now I'm going to be drawing an arc from here up to here so we're going to learn about our line tools our line tools over here in our toolbar has a little line you have the line, you have the arc, spiral tool, the rectangular grid tool, and the polar grid tool. We're going to be learning about all these tools, but we're going to start with the arc tool. So I click on the arc tool. I come back over to the center point right here. I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag up to the next point. I have to hold in uh, my left mouse button when I drag it up here. So I come down here I wait till it says intersection this program is very precise you need to make sure that you are clicking on the intersection if you're clicking on guide or you're clicking somewhere else or around about that point you are going to be screwed for later on down the road um, so make sure you're clicking on that intersection so I click on the intersection I come up I wait till it says intersection and that is where I'm going to drop if your arc is the other direction you can hit the F key on your keyboard and switch which direction you want to go it doesn't matter because later on we can fix it but just just so you know you can hit the F key to flip it back and forth I'm going to flip it that way now right now you see a red line here but if I actually actually click off if I come over here to my selection arrow I click off my arc disappears that's because I haven't assigned it a color or a thickness yet so I need to click on that arc I need to come up here here is um, my fill colors here is my stroke colors and then here is the uh, the stroke thickness so I want to assign it black 
I then want to give it a 10 point stroke. So I come over here and I'm going to come down to 10 points and that now gives it a color and then also a thickness. So this is going to be the first segment of my heart. I now need to put an arc here and then an arc down to here. So I come back to my arc tool. I grab the intersection or anchor point. The anchor point is the end point of my last line. That should be on the intersection because I dropped it there. I'm going to click and drag out. I'm not going to use the F key. I'm just going to show you how else you can fix it. And I'm going to drop it on the intersection down here. Okay, so I have two arcs. This doesn't really look like the top of a heart. I need to fix it. So I need to come over here and I have two arrows. I have a selection tool, which if you use a short keyboard short key, shortcut key, it's V. Or I have my direct select tool, sh keyboard shortcut A. I'm going to use my direct select tool when I select this I can select specific points with the direct select tool and when you select these points look at these little handles that pop up and now I can make my arc whatever shape I need it to be and I want it to be one smooth kind of arc going over here just change change this so it looks something like the top of a heart here. Now, the difference between your direct select tool and your selection tool is if you have your selection tool, you select the whole object and I cannot fine tune the points or the shape of the arc. I can move the arc as a whole. I can make the whole arc bigger as a whole but I can't fine tune the small points. The white arrow or the direct select tool will allow you to move single points. So if I click on this point and move it, that point does not move. It also allows me to, to reshape things uh, by where the point is. So this isn't perfect yet, but I'm going to put in my other arc and then get it uh, fine tune it. So I come back over to my arc tool. I'm going to click on this anchor point and I'm going to drag it down to this intersection and drop. Come back to my direct select tool, which is shortcut key A. And now I can use these handles. To make. a better uh, heart shape. So I just want half a heart here. Coming around, I'm going to just mess around with it a little bit here. I want it nice and smooth, especially in these joints. So make sure you're getting a smooth joint. What I don't want to see is these weird bumps and a lot of kids will make these weird bumps at their intersections make it nice and smooth so you play around with these these handles so you have a nice smooth heart now if you need to zoom in or zoom out you can always hold the command and then hit plus that will zoom in or command minus that will zoom out and that can help you with your fine tuning to make sure everything is coming out good. Okay. Little bit more here. And then we are going to reflect this over. So, right now I'm still in my heart my heart layer. What you could do is do the exact same thing that we did over on the other side, but then what's going to happen is you're not going to have identical sides. This heart is not going to, this side of the heart is not going to be the same as this next side of the heart. So what we want to do is we want to 
basically reflect this side over to the other side. And to do that, what we want to do is we want to join all three of these arcs so that we have one, one continuous line instead of three continuous lines that I can click on. So I'm going to hit the V key to go to my selection tool. I'm going to hold the shift key down and select all three arcs. Okay, so you have a box around all of them. If you hold the shift key and re-click, it will deselect. But I want every arc selected. You have the red line through. That tells you that it's selected. And I'm going to come up here to Object. And I'm going to go to Path. And I'm going to Join because this is a path. And I just joined my path. So now when I click on one section, everything is selected. Okay, so this is now one continuous line. So I want to take this one continuous line and I want to reflect it over to the other side. So I select it. I come over here to my toolbar and you're going to find a little circle. It's called the rotate tool. But there's actually a tool underneath it. And you can tell there's a tool underneath it by this little black corner here. So if the corner, the bottom right corner is black, that means there's other tools underneath it. So the, this eraser tool, there's another tool underneath it. This blob tool, there is not because it is does not have a black corner. The pencil tool has other tools underneath it. So if I click on that tool, I can then select which tool I want. So I want the reflect tool. This has already been selected. I need to select what point I want to reflect from and I want to reflect from this center point so I'm going to make sure that I'm on that anchor and I'm going to hold the option key down before I click by holding the option key down and then clicking this menu will pop up if I don't do that and I just click let's see I don't think it's actually going to do anything so make sure it does nothing Make sure you hold the option key down. So by holding the option key down, let me escape out. Let me, oh, oh, that's what uh, I could, I can manually reflect, uh, reflect it from that point and move it over. Basically looks like the rotate tool, but that's not what I want. So I'm going to undo that. I'm going to escape out of this and I'm going to reselect my heart. I'm going to come back over here to the reflect tool and I'm going to hold the option key. Click. My menu is going to pop up. And now I have a bunch of options here. I always like to preview what I'm going to do. Okay, that's showing that. You could do it horizontal. That's not correct. Or you could put an angle here uh, depending on what you want. I'm going to do it vertically. And I don't want to just reflect it and move it to that side. I want to copy it. So now that I have two sides here. Okay, so now I have one path over here and I have a second path over here. So what I want to do is now combine those two. I'm going to hit the shortcut key V so that I have my black select arrow. Or you could come up here in your toolbar and click it. I'm going to shift click both sides of my heart. And I'm going to go up to Object, Path, and Join. Okay? And just put little, little tips on the ends there. And now my heart is one major, uh, one big path. Now, here's where people are going to run into problems. You see how this path intersects directly with this other path here? If you were not exact in placing your arc on this point, you're going to run into problems. It will not join your two paths together. You need to make sure these points are intersected. And then if I come down here, you need to make sure whoa, you need to make sure these points are directly on top of each other. If the one of them extends out or if they are crisscrossed you will not be able to join it. So you then have to go back in with your, your white arrow and move it on top of each other so that they are um, connected. Okay. 
So your heart is done. We are now going to fill the heart with a polar grid. So if you come back over to your line tools, we were with arc. Now we're going to come down to the bolt polar grid tool. Now since we are doing something different, I'm going to create a new layer. So I'm going to come to new layer. And you can call it whatever. I'm going to call it bull. Whoop, double click on it. I'm going to call it bullseye. Click OK. So this layer is selected. I'm going to lock that layer so I can't accidentally move or delete or do anything to my heart. And I'm now going to create a bullseye. So if I click, and I want to click somewhere in the center here on that center line and drag out, whoop, escape. You need to make sure that you're clicked on your polar grid tool and drag out. You can now make a bullseye looking grid here. Now, this has these sections, like a pie, pie sections. We want to get rid of those. So if you go to your arrow key on your keyboard and you hit the left or the right arrow, you can either add or delete sections. I have my mouse still, the button is still held down. Soon as I let go of it, that becomes an object, so you have to keep that held down. I want to get rid of the pie sections. And then you can also, by hitting the up and down key, add different, um, I guess, columns or interior circles. Okay? So once you get about 8 to 10, you're going to be okay. I want the center of this bullseye to be the center of my heart. So I need to hold the Alt key. And that means wherever I clicked, when you hit the alt key that's where your polar grid tool is going to center off of I'm going to hold the shift key because look at I could dis distort this I want to hold the shift key so it's a perfect circle and I want to make it just bigger than my heart and I'm going to drop it so I still have my alt key or option key held down and the shift key down I'm going to let go of my mouse button first then I'm going to let go of the two buttons on the keyboard. So just to quickly show you that again, I'm going to delete this. I'm going to come over to my polar grid tool. I'm going to select a, a somewhere close to center here. I'm going to drag out to get rid of your section lines. You're going to hit the left and right arrow keys to make more interior circles or less. You're going to hit the up and down keys to draw this circle directly over the point you clicked you hold the option or alt key down to keep it a perfect circle you hold the shift key down keep in mind I still have my mouse button clicked As soon as I unclick my mouse button that's where it drops my circle I make it a little bigger than my heart I let go of my mouse button first then I let go of the buttons on my keyboard so I now have a bullseye. I need to change the stroke thickness and then I also want to change the color. So I'm going to come up here. It's selected. I'm going to change the thickness to four points. I'm then going to change the color to red. Now, I don't want it fully red. I want red, white, red, white, red, white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete what I just did. And now I'm going to come over to the polar grid tool and I'm going to option click where I want my bullseye. It's going to bring up the option menu. These values were what I already made. So I made it a circle that was almost nine inches in diameter. I put six dividers. There was zero radial dividers. And now what I need to do is I need to click these two buttons down here. And what it's going to do, it's going to actually create a bullseye. And so I have red, white, red, white, red, white. Now, if depending on the dividers, you could be starting out with white and then going to red. It depends how many dividers you have. I want between 6 and 10 dividers. Now, 
this is outside my heart. I want the heart to be filled with this. So what I'm going to do is go up to my selection tool or hit keyboard shortcut V. I'm going to click my bullseye and I'm going to hit command X. Command X cuts that from my document. I'm going to select my heart. Now my heart is locked over here so I'm going to unlock it. I'm going to select my heart. And down here there's this little circle and square and these are the different drawing modes we have. This is your standard drawing mode. You have a draw behind your object or you draw inside. I want to draw inside. So I'm going to click draw inside. Now whatever I do will be inside this circle. Click in it and hit command V for paste and it pastes my circle, my bullseye, inside. And I'm just going to click and drag it kind of to the visual center of my heart. It does a clipping mask so that notice it doesn't, you don't see the bullseye outside my heart. Click off of it and I now have my heart with a nice little bullseye in it. And that is all we are going to learn for today, folks. Thank you.